Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Mellow Thoughts. I'm sure everybody has been losing sleep and um, struggling to get over your day not having mellow thoughts in your life, but calm down everybody and indeed mellow out because Mellow Thoughts is back here on CM42 TV. WrestleMania, 33 Mellow Thoughts. Uh, I don't want to go too long here. Famous first words, 45 minute video. But um, I've, I want to go back and rewatch WrestleMania or at least skim through it. Fucking hell, 5 hours, 10 minutes and 44 seconds of my life that I will not be um, wasting on watching WrestleMania again. But uh, I kind of want to touch on a few things because the, the word that I keep using is overwhelming. And not overwhelming in a sense that it's like, oh my god, everything's amazing. Overwhelming, there's so much to take in. So much to sort of discuss and to debate and to comment on and to review. And it's like, I always, I don't normally do these like WrestleMania reviews, right? I, I post them and then I end up taking them down or no one watches them. And I understand why, because everybody else does them. Especially things like Royal Rumble and SummerSlam and big things like that. I don't tend to do videos and stuff like that because it's just no one no one watches. I don't particularly watch other people's <laughs> reviews and stuff like that because I just feel like so many people do them and everything is said, basically. But I thought, you know, I've got some time here and, and uh, I feel up to doing it. I feel up to discussing it. But it is opening day, ladies and gentlemen, the day after WrestleMania. Last night was the season finale of, of the WWE's annual year. And tonight on Raw is the season premiere. It is the opening day. Opening day. <laughs> opening day. So Raw tonight is going to be very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing it a lot. I wonder who will debut. Uh, I was going to suggest maybe there will be a return. But there was an, indeed one of the biggest returns in wrestling history last night at WrestleMania 33. Um, I'll get onto that in a second, but again, I said it was overwhelming, and because there's different ways you can look at it, right? The fact that it's WrestleMania and like someone like me who like prides themselves and knowing everything about fucking about wrestling and, and WrestleMania and history, um, you need to study these things, right? Because obviously it's, it's part of wrestling trivia, you know, like history of WrestleMania and results and stuff like that. So there's that, you're taking all that and you're taking on the spectacle of WrestleMania with the amazing set, um, one of my favourite sets in WrestleMania history, the um, incredible audience and the longest ramp in WWE history, that's not even, that's not me joking, it was 80 yards long and I, dare I, I mean I love when it's like a really long ramp, like it just brings me back to like old WrestleManias and stuff like that, like 17, 18, 19 with a really like feckin' so like lengthy and, and you know, for them to walk down. And I loved the Royal Rumble this year because it was like a massive thing. Um, but I must admit, <laughs> the one last night was a little bit too long, I think. Not just the you know the length of the show, but the length of the fucking ramp. Um, for people like uh, for like Baron Corbin and stuff like that, who are just trying to go so fast just to, so time doesn't get cut off their, off their match. And then you get geniuses like Sasha Banks who gets a driver. And Undertaker who just like comes up halfway, he's like, I'm not rocking the rest of it. Love that. Um, but I do think some of the entrances were a bit too long, even though I'm a sucker for the entrances at WrestleMania. Um, so there's all that to take in. Then you take in just the bog standard wrestling stuff, like the title switches and the good matches and the big spots and stuff like that. And then you take in everything in between. All the wee WrestleMania hints, like all the shots of the audience and the pyro going off and the Pitbull performance. And I, I like Pitbull and stuff. I always like his music. Always, you know, produces lots of summer songs and stuff like that. Um... However, that would have been great in like a, a normal pay-per-view because it was a good wee performance that gave the crowd a break, but maybe not in a show that's over five hours long. <laughs> I mean, I know they had to have some sort of musical performance or some sort of celebrity effect because it's WrestleMania, but good God almighty, the show's already fucking four and a half hours long. You put on Pitbull, Lunch Money Lewis and Flo Rida, someone else as well, and then you've got another four matches to go. One is an Undertaker match. And one is a Bray Wyatt match, and one's a Randy Orton match, and one's a Goldberg match, and these people who take a long time to do their stuff and take a long time to get to the ring, um, and are, are known for the matches being long. But then you get Goldberg. Goldberg and Lesnar had a fucking perfect end to the story, just having a just a, a five minute brawl. I didn't want to see them wrestle for twenty minutes. So people are complaining about the Universal Title match not being, um, not being at like twenty minutes long or whatever, as long as the the WWE Title match. What else can you expect? Um, People hating on the Undertaker match. What else were you expecting? It was perfect. An incredible story, an incredible build-up, the perfect way for Taker to go out. He always said 
He wants to, you know, his last match is going to pass the torch at WrestleMania to the next big star. It was going to be Kurt Angle and that didn't work out. It was going to be Randy Orton and that didn't work out. All these things. CM Punk, that didn't work out. Lesnar ends the streak. So now he's able to, you know, lose to anybody at WrestleMania and it's not really that big of a deal. It could have been Wyatt and it could have been Reigns. It ended up being Reigns. And I'm happy about that because I am indeed a Roman Reigns fan. And if you're not a Roman Reigns fan, then it's obviously okay because obviously he doesn't have um, a lot of fans. <laughs> he does have, he's got huge fans. He's got like, um, I think he's the number one merch guy just now in the company. Him and, and the New Day are the, are the, the two biggest selling merch guys um, or acts. But the reaction he gets and the fact that you get so much emotion out of an audience. Well, I've seen him walking down that massive ramp last night. It's just like, that's a star right there, man. And uh, he told the story just the way it had to be. So, great ending to the show. Undertaker is my favourite wrestler of all time. So, obviously, it was a bit emotional seeing him leave and stuff, but you saw it coming. It's not as if it was like, oh, my God, I'm thinking leaving. And the fact that he left his, his hat and stuff like that. Nice wee touch. Good ending to WrestleMania. I mean, I didn't expect it to go on last, but then I heard rumours and I was like, okay, it's Taker's last match. And then the, the GR thing, brilliant. Uh, I'd love to see GR get more of a... Um, full time thing I don't know if it's because they're re retaliating to him getting all the work outside of it like commentating for Walt Culture and commentating for New Japan and stuff like that and then the rumours of him going to TNA or ROH or whatever um, I don't know if they're not liking that and they want to get him back but that would be great if he was back because he just knows how to make stars just with things he says he said something about Roman he was like Roman Reigns is a young athletic machine or something it's just like just in that one line, he's already like up a level in terms of in right there against Taker, uh, like a, as a legit competitor. So that was good. Um, I loved the ending. I loved that match. Um, I, it, it's not one I'm, I'm particularly going to watch for years to come because it is quite slow and it is quite sad. But it is a historic moment and it's a it's a crazy moment. And speaking of crazy moments, oh my god, one of the best WrestleMania moments of all time, the Hardy Boys return. Now I've heard rumors. About the, obviously the Hardys were, were coming back and stuff like that. It's a matter of when and not if. It's the same with Kurt Angle and the same with Finn Balor. But, like, I was thinking as well, the way they returned, that's like stuff you do with the wrestling figures when you're younger. Well, that's the stuff you kind of do on SmackDown vs. Raw, WWE 2K17. Like, WrestleMania, there's a match going on in the ring or about to start. The GM comes out. This is now a, big, a bigger match, like Teddy Long. Holla, holla, holla. This is now a tag team match, player. And then, like, the music hits and it's the big return. They came out at WrestleMania and, and they win the titles. That stuff doesn't happen in real life WWE. These are fantasy things that you dream about. Oh, that, imagine if, you know, before the ladder match starts, the Hardy Boys came out and won the titles. You just, like, it's just fantasy booking. And it fucking happened at WrestleMania. It was one of the moments I had to kind of contain myself a little bit. Um, I didn't want to get too excited. But then again, it's like, you can't get, like, the Hardy Boys are, like, my fa favourite tag team of all time. And Jeff Hardy is one of my favourite wrestlers of all time, my childhood hero. Matt Hardy's recent work is just so, like, incredible and he just admire it so much. And the fucking broken thing, obviously it wasn't the complete broken thing. The, yeah, it's a wonderful thing. But obviously I think that's just because it's trademarked the TNA and stuff like that. Um, and that's fine. But as, as we interviews and stuff on WWE.com and YouTube, he's still saying things like, we have procured the tag team titles. And he's saying things like, it was delightful and things. So tonight on Raw, the delete chants are going to be fucking surreal. So that was amazing. Like, that's one of my favourite WrestleMania moments ever. Um, the fucking Hardy Boys came back. And it's like, you see them in TNA and ROH and stuff, but it's not the same. Like, seeing Jeff Hardy do his, like, his, his dance thing at the top of the WrestleMania stage. And Jeff looks genuinely over the moon to be back. Like, the interviews right after the match and stuff, he's holding the titles, he just looks absolutely delighted, delighted <laughs> to be back in WWE and stuff. And I just don't know what type of deal they're going to have. Because the reason they left and stuff, because of the travel and the, they were getting banged up and stuff like that. They've obviously had time to rest, you know, but they've been doing some crazy stuff in ROH. Just last night or, or two nights ago, ladder match against the Young Bucks. Can you imagine they get injured, like, severely? And they couldn't have that moment. Um... I mean, it could be a Dudley's thing, you know, just one year, one year and done, just put over some teams and be like a highlight of the show or whatever, which would be great. And, you know, it's just one more big run, close out the careers, Matt being a genius and Jeff just being just Jeff Hardy, just amazing. Oh, couldn't believe it. Other note, I'll, I'll close this up here, but other notable things, Randy Orton winning the WWE title, did not expect it, thought Wyatt would retain. Uh, it was a pretty decent match. I loved the effect with the ring, with, the, with all the 
maggots and stuff, really cool. Rollins and Triple H, really liked uh, Triple H's entrance with a police escort because he's in charge, it was really cool. Um, the match was a bit slow, um, I don't really remember it that much, I don't know what I was doing, I guess I was on my phone or something during, the, during this match, but it was good, I mean, good drama and stuff at the end. Cena proposing to Nikki Bella, um, I actually didn't see it coming and then when he grabbed the mic I was like he's going to propose and it was a nice wee moment and stuff but you know, whatever, it was cool. Owens and Jericho, good match, Owens wins as predicted and uh, AJ versus Shane I think might be my favourite match on the card, um, just an awesome opener, I was giving this show a hard time for not having like that clear straight fire opener, you know, that it's like that's the one that you know. We'll get the crowd going and stuff like that. And I did not expect it to be this one. And it was a fucking awesome match, man. And Shane didn't jump off the Titan Tron or jump off the roller coaster or anything like we all predicted. However, he did uh, do the shooting star and he did the leap of faith and the coast to coast and stuff. And AJ just can't have a bad match with anybody. AJ is the best wrestler of this generation. And uh, I think that is my favourite match on the, on the whole show. Um, one of my favourite matches of the year so far. Well, it was Ambrose and Corbin got to the pre-show. Um, I was a bit I know, upset at the time. However, you know, it was shown on USA, 5 million viewers. You know, they got, you know, 10 minutes. It was not as if it was a short match. They, you know, risked getting cut on the main show, just like the, the Neville and Aries match. And the, the Cruiserweight match was freaking great as well, man. Go back and watch that if you haven't already. Um, really good stuff. And then the, the Battle Royal as well with Mojo winning. I mean, that's not a great choice for a winner, but whatever. But the, the celebrity thing with Gronk Gronkowski from the Patriots coming in, the funniest thing was the security he didn't know he was he was supposed to be in there. And they tried to grab him. They thought he was a fan. A very tall fan, but um, the bit the women didn't feel like a fan. She felt more like a fan nay by doing that. But that was really funny. But yeah, overall, what a fucking surreal WrestleMania. Overwhelming, mental, crazy. Um, and I cannot wait for Raw this week. And it's opening day. Um, let's see where it goes. I heard they've got some new ideas. Some fresh faces are coming up. Nakamura, Finn Balor should appear tonight. I'm hoping Kurt Angle replaces Mick Foley as GM. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed WrestleMania. But it's the longest WrestleMania in history. Five hours, ten minutes, and forty-four seconds. What the hell? But we made it. WrestleMania is all over and done for another year. And I hope everybody had a good WrestleMania. I certainly did. Until next time, I'm Chris Moffat. Subscribe to the Good Bit Podcast. All links are in the description box. And follow me on Twitter at CM42TV. Until next time, I'm a fan of The Hardy Boys are fucking back. The Hardys. 